The helicopter is one of the most important developments in marine operations since World War II. Troop carrying helicopters can carry out landings far from enemy defenses with speed and precision. For objectives ashore, 15, 20 kilometers and, and farther, are greatly enhanced by the helicopter. The amphibious assault vehicle, although a tremendous asset, is uh, slower, takes longer time to seize a certain objective. Helicopters are used in amphibious operations in conjunction with amphibious vehicles and craft. The combination of air and sea-based power compromises enemy defenses and adds a critical element of surprise. The helicopter uh, gives the Marine commander a large option. He's able to conduct the amphibious assault uh, with uh, an added surprise to the enemy. When you come across the beach, whether you're coming across in mic boats or LCACs or AAVs, um, you're coming right at the beach. And uh, the enemy's defended the beach. He's got his defenses oriented towards you. If you have a helicopter, you can use that to put troops in at the decisive time on the enemy's flank. It'll surprise him and it'll force him to commit some of his troops to another area that he wasn't ready for. Long-range threats in the form of anti-ship missiles have begun to pose a particular hazard to landing forces. These weapons can have devastating consequences on an amphibious assault force. Concerned that these missiles could destroy transports anchored offshore, the Marines developed a new tactic called over-the-horizon landings. Because the coastal anti-ship missile launchers cannot see over the horizon, the Naval Landing Task Force remains miles away and out of sight. But with the task force so far out to sea, Conventional AAVs under constant enemy fire would take too long to reach the shore. Existing helicopters do not have the speed, range, or endurance for this mission either. As a result, the Marines are pinning their hopes on a radical new type of aircraft to carry out over-the-horizon missions, the V-22 Osprey. The Osprey combines the best features of helicopters and conventional aircraft in one package. It can take off vertically like a helicopter. Then, once in flight, its engines move to a more conventional, horizontal position, enabling it to fly as fast as a traditional transport aircraft. Though quite large, the Osprey can be stowed below deck. To minimize its size and meet flight readiness times, the V-22 can quickly modify its wing and rotor assemblies. Remarkably, this process takes less than 90 seconds without the aid of ground crew. The Marines plan to field approximately 350 Ospreys, replacing the Corps' aging fleet of medium-lift helicopters. The CH-46 Sea Knight has long served as the backbone of Marine Helleborn Assault. It is a helicopter equivalent of the amphibious assault vehicle, also carrying 25 troops. It is fitted with a rear ramp and can carry small vehicles if needed. The home of the CH-46 during amphibious operations is the LHA amphibious assault ships. The Marines board their helicopters from the holds below and can be over the beach only minutes after launch. In addition to troop transport, the Sea Knight can also be used for many other missions, such as supporting Marine raiding parties ashore. If need be, the CH-46 needn't land, but can extract the raiding party in a spectacular fashion. The heavy lift for Marine Helleborn assaults comes from the massive CH-53E Super Stallion. The Super Stallion can carry up to 55 troops and has greater range than the CH-46. It is often used to carry heavy loads and supplies for Marine assaults. It can even carry the Marines' light armored vehicles and extend their range through mid-air refueling.
The teeth of the Helleborn Assault are the AH-1T Sea Cobra and the improved AH-1W Super Cobra. The AH-1 attack helicopter can escort the transport helicopters during a Helleborn Assault and provide gunfire, missile and rocket support to the troops once they land. Marine aviation is not limited to helicopters. The Corps fields high-performance jet aircraft, such as the F-A-18 Hornet Strike Fighter. The Hornet Strike Fighter is an all-weather enemy interceptor, which can also attack ground targets. Air-to-air -air armaments are carried on nine external wing stations. And the Hornet can also carry air-to-ground missiles, guided bombs, or external fuel tanks for long-range missions. Airborne command and control and radar suppression is provided by the EA-6B Prowler. The Prowler not only provides surveillance and electronic radar jamming, but is fitted with harm high-speed anti-radiation missiles for direct suppression of enemy air defenses. These aircraft can operate from land bases or serve alongside Navy strike units from the deck of Navy supercarriers. But the most recognizable marine jet is the AV-8B Harrier II jump jet. The Harrier was originally developed in Britain. The Marines recognized the suitability of the jump jet concept for their demanding assignments. The Harrier does not need a conventional runway for takeoffs. It can operate equally well from the small deck of an amphibious assault ship or from a small clearing of land in a Marine beachhead. The Harrier can carry out ground attack missions in close air support of Marine ground troops using laser-guided bombs. And it can be armed with a variety of air-to-air -air missiles to protect the beachhead from enemy aircraft. The U.S. Marine Corps is a fighting force especially suited to America's global maritime strategy. Its unique blend of highly motivated men and women, supported by the latest advances in high technology weapon systems, has earned it a well-deserved reputation among the elite fighting forces of the world.